Hi, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Ask Dr. Khan Show. I'm Dr. Peter Khan, functional medicine practitioner. And on this show, you're just one whiteboard away from health. I did it better, much better this time than last week. So you're just one whiteboard away from health. Why? Because on this show, I give you information that's gonna help you connect the dots to solve your health puzzle. Now, today, we're gonna to be talking about the different models, different ways that toxins can build up in the system and how that triggers inflammation and immune system dysfunction and leads to autoimmune disease and degeneration, fatigue, inflammation, and chronic illness. These are the symptoms or diseases that are manifested. But remember, we don't want to treat the symptom. We want to address the root cause by understanding physiology and how things actually come about, right? There's a lot of people that's going to sell you something to try to address a symptom here. Pharmaceutical drugs, there's tons of drugs that will supposedly treat the symptom but not address the root cause. So this is a downstream effect. We want to go upstream to find out what, how do things come about. So let's talk about toxicity. So today's show is on toxicity and how that affects Im immune function. Okay. Now this episode is going to be a little bit heavy with content, but if you've been following me all along and it, that's the benefit of following me on a regular basis because each video builds on the previous one. So it's like building blocks and you just build up this knowledge base. And so when we talk about things like this, it's just gonna just help you connect the dots. You're gonna just understand it much better. So with toxicity, there's three different models. Okay, so we're gonna talk about models of toxicity. Theories, okay, another way to put it. So we have a theory of toxicity, how toxins affect our body. Number one, we have a dose-dependent dose dependent model. In this model of toxicity, what we're saying is that toxins can be labeled safe or unsafe based on the dose needed to create a, a reaction, meaning the, mo the more you t have a toxin in your system, it's going to reach a certain amount where above that certain amount, it's going to become toxic for you. Let's use an example, mercury. Maybe above, you know, five parts per million, that's the toxic level. So if you stay under five parts per million, then they don't consider a problem, even though it's still there, but they don't consider a problem because they say five parts per billion is where we had caused death in the animal study, where we give them this much mercury and that's when it killed them. That's one way to look at it. However, we know that there's other ways that you can also build up this response. Another way that can happen is called a buildup model. A buildup model of toxicity. In this model, what we're saying is that you may have low levels of, ex of exposure to a toxin that doesn't kill you, but if you accumulate it long enough, then that level is going to build up to a certain point where it will not cause problems. So in a dose-dependent model, let's use brown, this is dependent on quantity. In the buildup model, it's more dependent on frequency. How often, how long have you been exposed or duration, right? This is just, hey, if you get exposed to it every day, but if it's a little bit, it won't kill you. Unless you have a whole bunch, you cross a certain threshold, then it will cause problems. In a buildup model, what we're saying is that even though if you don't have a, a dose that'll kill you, but if you have small amounts over time, these toxins can build up and then it'll reach a point where it can hurt, it can cause problem, okay? And then we have a third model where it's an immune tolerance model. In this model, in this theory, what we're saying is that it doesn't matter how much toxin you've been exposed and how long you had it, it doesn't really matter. What it matters is what is your body doing with it? Is your immune system reacting to it or is it tolerating it, right? So that's why you have people who can smoke. They smoke all their entire life and they're fine, some people. And there are other people who they're organic, they eat clean, they exercise, but then they still have problems. 
So there's some t issue with the body's ability to tolerate the toxin. Obviously, this brings in genetics. So we can do genetic testing to find out if your cytochrome P450 enzyme system is working properly. Do you have trouble with methylation? We can test through genetics if you have genetic tendencies for you to not able to eliminate things or tolerate things. However, that's just one aspect of it because even if you have the genetic, it doesn't guarantee you're gonna have a problem. It all depends on the dose, the frequency, and the immune tolerance. So there's three different ways that this can affect you. They all matter, but it's a combination of all three. But at the end of the day, if you have a lot of toxins, you've been exposed to it for a long time. If your immune system is working really well, you may not react to these chemicals, and therefore you might be okay, even though you're full of toxins. So this is the immune aspect. It's not quantity or the frequency of your exposure. It's really dependent on the immune system's tolerance. Okay, so this is immune, where quantity and frequency doesn't matter. So how does that lead into this inflammation or this disease that we're talking about? What happens is when you have these d uh, dose, let's just say, they all will start to affect or start to cause what's called a loss of immune chemical tolerance. Seems like a big word, but it's really simple. Basically, what we're having is, is that your immune system is no longer able to tolerate the chemical either because you have too much all at one time, or you have small amounts over long periods of time, or your immune system just doesn't work right because of these things, over time, your immune system will start to see these chemicals that you're exposed to more and more as a bad guy. So you'll react to it more. You know how some people, you know, maybe they say, oh, you know, I used to be able to, uh, you know, eat certain food, but now I'm not able to eat them anymore because I, I now react to them. Because you can develop the reaction, right? These reactions is not necessarily lifelong, it's not necessarily something that you'll never have if you didn't have before because you can develop problem to it due to a loss of immune chemical tolerance. This is important because if you can lose it, you can get it back, right? This is something that can be addressed, can be fixed, can be supplemented, can be using lifestyle nutrition strategies and can detox. This is what we do in our program when we work with our video consultation clients, our telemedicine client, where we help clients all throughout the United States and globally through our video consultation program. So it doesn't matter where you are, you can get help from us. And what we do is we run specific labs to identify, be it chemical issues, toxicities, immune function markers, and even genetics to see how your body is able to tolerate chemicals. And then we can use specific strategies to reverse and repair and to fix these problems so that you can start to get your life back. You can start to reverse symptoms of autoimmunity, stop, slow or stop degeneration, reverse fatigue, quench inflammation, and even reverse chronic illness. But that comes not by treating the chronic illness. We don't treat anything. Our approach is to support natural physiology, help your body to heal itself by remo removing these blockages. And this could be a major blockage because toxicity is so commonplace and ubiquitous that all of us are affected by it. We all have chemicals in our body, so it's a matter of how well is your system able to, one, eliminate, two, tolerate what you have in your system. That is so important. Now what happens is, when you have this loss of tolerance, what happens is your glutathione recycling, glutathione status and recycling, is diminished. And what I've been talking about glutathione quite a bit in the past several weeks leading up to this episode about how glutathione is a master antioxidant. Every single cell in your body produces it intracellularly. Not only glutathione is important in protecting the cell against oxidative damage, which is what toxins can do. They can create damage to the cell and glutathione protects you against that. Glutathione is also important in phase two liver detoxification and biotransformation to help you eliminate the toxins. But glutathione is really, really important in T regulatory cell function. So these are the immune cells that actually develop tolerance. 
the T regulatory cells in your immune system is what contributes to tolerance to your self tissue so you don't become autoimmune and tolerance to chemicals so you don't react to the chemical despite the fact that we have chemical we're all exposed. So glutathione is really important and in this case where we have the situation where we have this loss of immune chemical tolerance due to the bombardment of these toxins, it leads to a diminished glutathione status and recycling. So now this is needed to help with that, but this contribute to the deficiency of this. So it's like a vicious cycle. So that's why glutathione supplementation can be very, very important to support normal physiology to help you with this type of situation. Okay? Another thing that this loss of immune chemical tolerance due to toxicity can cause is, like I said earlier, decreased T regulatory cell function. So the T cells are the immune cells, and there are a specific type called the T regulatory cells. Sometimes we call it TH3 cells in scientific literature. These TH3 regulatory cells are the ones that regulate your immune system function so that it doesn't become overzealous and start to attack everything that it comes into contact with. And that's what an allergy is, right? When you're allergic to something, your body is overzealous. You know, somebody eats a peanut and they're fine. Another person who have allergy eats a peanut, their response is overwhelming and creates anaphylaxis and allergic reactions. That's because these T regulatory cells are not function properly. In autoimmune, that's what's happening. You have decreased T regulatory cell function. And glutathione contributes to T reg cell function. Glutathione is not the only thing that does it. Vitamin D is very important as well. And there's many other things. We're gonna have more episodes coming up where we're gonna talk about immune function and how to dampen inflammation from a scientific perspective. When you have loss of immune chemical tolerance, you also get decreased barrier function. So barrier system, we're talking about gut barrier, right? Gut being 70% of your immune system is a barrier system that protects you. If you have this loss of immune chemical tolerance, what happens is it's gonna create this inflammation and eventually it's gonna to start to degrade the gut barrier. Okay? And that includes also the lung barrier. That's also a barrier. And also the blood brain barrier, which I talked about in the last few episodes. These barrier systems can all become compromised due to this toxicity buildup. Okay? Last but not least, you're also gonna have decreased cytokine regulation. And again, if you've been following my show, you heard the word cytokine. Cyto means cell, kine means messenger. So these are cellular messengers. It's like your immune system sending text messages to each other to tell them that, hey, here's an infection, go get them. Here's an injury, go heal it. Cytokines are the text messages of the immune system that trigger inflammation. Remember, inflammation is not good or bad, it just is. It's necessary to help you just jumpstart the healing process, but when inflammation doesn't go away, that's when it becomes a problem, right? Just like in the forest, you have controlled burns so that you can burn off the dead brushes so you can prevent the forest fire by having a controlled burn. But if fire burns out of control, that becomes a forest fire or brush fire, that's when it destroy homes and destroy the, the, the forest, right? So we want inflammation, but not when it's too, too much. So cytokine regulation can be disrupted by this loss of immune chemical tolerance due to toxicity. The whole point is, Toxins, because this is something that a lot of it, a lot of us are missing, because we talk about diet a lot, right? And people who follow me, who are interested in natural health and functional medicine, we talk about what do I eat every day. I get questions from people, Doc, what do I eat? What food do I eat to fix this problem? What food do I eat to treat this disease? You don't eat a food to treat a disease. You eat a food to become healthy, and when you're healthy, disease become absent because you have more health. So you don't use food to treat disease. You use food to become healthy. But the problem is we're focused so much on food. I mean, how much food do you have to eat to really truly get rid of a mercury toxicity if that's what you have? So this is where food is important, but it may not be enough. You may have to find out if you have underlying toxins and infection and go through a process to detox those toxins and infections so that your body can actually start to heal. Without which, food is alone cannot re repair this. We can use food to repair the gut lining by not eating food that can aggravate it, by eating specific that can help it, 
but it's not enough, folks. We're so bombarded with toxins, we're so inflamed, people are so chronically ill, so inflamed, so degenerated, and so autoimmune that food alone is simply not enough. That's why I'm giving you resources. First of all, the number one resource you can have is knowledge. That's the most important resource you can have. So I, I applaud you for watching this show. I wanna thank you for sharing this ahead of time because by sharing this knowledge, this is the most valuable thing you can do. So once you have this loss of tolerance and start to degrade glutathione system, T-reg cell function, you start to create barrier problem like leaky gut and you get cytokine dysregulation, what's gonna happen is you're gonna to lead to multiple sensitivities. We should use red here. This is gonna to lead to going to lead to multiple food and chemical sensitivities. Why? Because you are losing this immune system tolerance and all the things that's being depleted through this process are the exact things that's needed to help your immune system to tolerate food, chemicals, environmental compound, and even self tissue so you don't become autoimmune. So this is gonna to lead to people having multiple chemical sensitivity, where you feel like, man, I'm just sensitive to everything on the sun. You know, chemicals, I'm really sensitive to Clorox when I smell it, or perfumes. Then you're sensitive to food, you have food sensitivity test done, you're sensitive to everything. You have allergy scratch test done, you're sensitive to every dust, ragweed, everything in the environment. If you're sensitive to everything in the environment, it's not the environment's fault, it's your body cannot tolerate it because you have this loss of immune chemical tolerance. This is the end result of that. And what happens is when you have these things chronically, the end result of this is going to be autoimmune disease when you have chronic sensitivities because your body just continuously reacts and you're further losing tolerance and now you lose tolerance to your own tissue, you have autoimmune, Hashimoto's, thyroid. You have autoimmune to your joints, rheumatoid arthritis, or psoriatic arthritis. You have autoimmune to your gut, like celiac disease, or ulcerative colitis. You have autoimmune to, to your brain, like multiple sclerosis, or myasthenia gravis. There are 140 different named autoimmune disease. It doesn't really matter because they're all the same disease, just different manifestation of the same disease. The point is, it's autoimmune. And even that, that's not the root cause. The root cause is this loss of immune chemical tolerance. And what is that caused by? Toxicity could be one thing. It could also be chronic exposure to processed food on the top. We can just substitute out that toxin for processed food, for gluten. We can substitute this toxicity word for infections. So at the end of that, you're gonna get degeneration because as your tissue become more inflamed due to this process, your joints gonna start to erode, your organs, your brain cells, you're gonna get tissue degeneration and that's when you start having functional issues. You're gonna have fatigue because when you're inflamed and you have glutathione issues, your mitochondrial production of energy of ATP is gonna go down. So you're gonna feel fatigue. You may have thyroid problem associated with that due to Hashimoto's. You're gonna feel inflamed because these processes is what modulate and regulate inflammatory process and that's why glutathione is so important along with other things, vitamin D, turmeric, resveratrol, and it's gonna to contribute to chronic illness where you just feel like you're sick all the time it's like, man, I changed my diet. I cut out gluten 100%. I did all these things. Why am I still not better? Because the underlying root cause may not have been addressed. You say, I take a whole bunch of supplements. Just because you're taking supplements doesn't mean you're getting rid of toxicity, folks. So I take this liver support. It says milk thistle in it. What do you think milk thistle is doing to the mercury? Nothing. Milk thistle itself does not re remove or bind to mercury. So a lot of people have this misunderstanding about what supplement is supposed to do. Well, I take this glutathione supplement. Glutathione does have some activity against mercury, but it's not a magic pill, right? It's not overnight. It takes time. It's an accumulation. It's a buildup. If it's a buildup, it's going to take time to build down, to eliminate that. So you got to have patience in the process. But the good thing is, if you have knowledge and you know you're doing the right thing, then you're going to have patience because you're going to be able to wait it out. And, and see the result at the end and not just go for fast fix or quick fix that doesn't work. And that's why I'm speaking to you.
Okay? So hopefully this information helps you. And uh, please share this video with, with others who may benefit from this information. Our goal is to impact as many people as possible through the right information, accurate information, presented accurately, so that you can actually be the master of your own body. You should learn about your own body. You should be able to make consent choices. It doesn't mean you self-diagnose, self-treat, but you should be able to have intelligent conversations based on science and based on physiology. So please share this video. Please like and share. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section. I answer every question myself. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at PeterCon DC. Just go to YouTube and search my name, PeterCon DC. You'll find over 550 videos that would be very helpful for you. So again, until next time, you're just one whiteboard away from health. See you next time. Whoa!